Who wants some? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the best scary movies that aren't too scary. No, please don't kill me, Mr. Ghostface. I want to be in the sequel. Number 10, A Quiet Place. Even if you're not a horror fan, you have to appreciate the phenomenal acting, directing and sound design of this movie. The two young stars are especially brilliant, a testament both to their talent and to John Krasinski's skill as a director. You might find yourself gripping your armrest while you watch, but that's because most of the film is more tense than scary as the characters live in a constant fear of the slightest noise. This tension is punctuated by scenes of brief but intense action when the aliens finally rear their ugly heads. I can still feel the weight in my arms. Small but so heavy. Those moments are scary, but A Quiet Place is mostly free of jump scares and gore, making it an easier watch than many alien horror films. Number nine, Gremlins. Has it got a name, Dad? Yeah, Mogwai. What? Mogwai. I don't know, it's some Chinese word. I just call him Gizmo. He seems to like it. The 1980s produced plenty of terrifying, gory, and violent horror movies, but this isn't one of them. Gremlins is a horror comedy, with an emphasis on the comedy. While it does get bloody at times, the cartoonish nature of both the violence and the Gremlins themselves make it pretty easy to bear. Can I hold him? Sure. I don't see why not. He seems to like you. Great. Thanks a lot. Sorry. Who's in that jar? The creatures do terrorize an entire town and kill several people, but they're not really evil. They're more like agents of chaos, and their antics are funny rather than scary. It's actually a little sad when they get killed, because despite the havoc they wreak, they're extremely fun to watch. But the most important rule the rule you can never forget, no matter how much he cries, no matter how much he begs, never, never feed him after midnight. Number 8. The Cabin in the Woods You might expect a homage to the horror genre to be pretty traumatising to watch. After all, this movie is packed with everything horror haters can't stand. Blood, gore, terrifying monsters, and jump scares. But somehow, The Cabin in the Woods manages to be scary and super fun to watch at the same time. That might be because the movie frequently cuts back to the underground technicians who are monitoring the action in the cabin. Their meta-commentary breaks up the tension and provides some comic relief. That means there's just Japan. Japan and us. Well, it's not the first time it's come down to that. Japan has a perfect record. The violence is also so over the top that it's not actually scary, just absurd. If you can stomach the carnage, you'll find that this modern classic is a highly entertaining watch. I'm pretty sure someone is. Oh. I'm gonna go for a walk. No! What are you saying? Huh? What do you want? Number seven, Poltergeist. They're here. To be fair, if you watched this as a kid, it probably did traumatise you. But for adults, the scares are a little too tame to be truly terrifying. That might be surprising, considering that it was directed by horror veteran Toby Hooper, who brought us movies like The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I could do absolutely nothing without your faith in this world and your love for the children. I will. Believe me, I will. There are some gross out moments and a few genuinely unnerving scenes, but most of Poltergeist is spooky and atmospheric rather than scary. Oh, Jesus, oh, don't do that, honey. You want to see mommy lying in a cigar box covered with licorice? Uh -uh. That's probably thanks to the influence of writer Steven Spielberg, who reportedly spent a lot of time on set and had a hand in the film's direction. The result is an engrossing family drama with creepy horror elements that even fans with a low tolerance for terror can enjoy. Number six, The Others. Why were you crying? Why were you crying? I just heard you a moment ago. There's no need to feel ashamed, darling. I don't. Speaking of spooky and atmospheric, this gothic ghost story feels like it came from another era. Grace Stewart lives with her two children and three servants in a creepy old country mansion 
that must be kept dark due to their kid's allergy to sunlight. Because here most of the time you can hardly see your way. It's often difficult to make out if there is a table, a chair, a door, a sideboard. Or one of my children playing hide and seek. What do you mean, ma'am? Soon, the family begins hearing strange voices, and the children claim to be visited by another family that only they can see. Grace starts to suspect that the servants aren't what they seem. We won't spoil the big reveal, but if you are easily unnerved, you might want to watch this one with the lights on. I will not stay calm. For five whole years during the occupation, I managed to avoid a single Nazi ever stepping foot in this house, and now there is someone here under my nose, opening and closing the doors. Ma'am, this is a very old house. Number five, Frankenstein. It's alive! It's alive! In the name of God! Now I know what it feels like to be God! The horror genre really began to hit its stride on the big screen in the 1930s, and Universal Pictures staked its claim as the studio known for monster movies. In 1931, Boris Karloff's turn as Frankenstein's monster thrilled audiences, with one critic even calling it a new peak in horror. What can we do? Kill it, as you would any savage animal. We must overpower him first. Get me a hypodermic needle. It's murder. It's our only chance. In a few minutes, he'll be through that door. Come, quick, hurry. The film drew many comparisons to Dracula, which was released earlier the same year and has also left a major mark on cinema history. Neither of these movies is very scary by modern standards, but they are classics for a reason, and every cinephile and horror buff should watch them at some point. Who are you? I'm Maria. Will you play with me? Number 4, Night of the Living Dead. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Stop it! You're ignorant. They're coming for you, Barbara. Stop it. You're acting like a child. The extreme violence and gore of this groundbreaking film were shocking to audiences in the late 60s. The MPA rating didn't exist yet, and many families who took their young kids to see the movie were stunned by the carnage on screen. There are two of them out there. Have you seen any more around here? I can take I care of those know. two. I well, don't I know, know you're afraid, but we have I to... Don't no! Director George Romero used real animal meat and organs for the flesh-eating scenes, and if you're easily grossed out, you might still find them hard to watch. In other words, you feel that the radiation on the Venus probe is enough to call these, cause these mutations? There was a very high degree of radiation. Well, just a minute. Uh, uh, I'm not sure that that's certain at all. I don't that's, think that has been a uh, irrefutable explanation that we have at this time. Fortunately, we only see the blood and guts for a few moments, and the fact that it's in black and white makes it considerably easier to tolerate. Number three, The Sixth Sense. I see dead people. Not many horror movies get an Academy Award nomination for Best Picture, but this is one of them. M. Night Shyamalan is at the top of his game in this chilling, slow burn thriller. With few jump scares and next to no violence, the film still manages to keep audiences on the edge of their seats, thanks in part to masterful cinematography and a near-perfect musical score. Young Haley Joel Osment's performance also deserves serious acclaim. I don't like people looking at me like that. Like what? Stop it! In the hands of a less talented actor, some of the most pivotal scenes just wouldn't have worked as well as they did. The Sixth Sense is a great stepping stone into the horror genre, for those who prefer to stay away from the harder stuff. Number 2, Scream. Too scared. No, no, it's just what's the point? They're all the same. Some stupid killer stalking some big-breasted girl who can't act who's always running up the stairs when she should be going out the front door. It's insulting. By the mid-90s, the slasher genre had gotten pretty stale, but this film deserves credit for reviving it. Like The Cabin in the Woods, Scream is a horror movie for people who love horror movies, filled with homages and references to the classics. Fair warning that it is somewhat violent, though it's nothing compared to really hardcore gore fests like the Saw franchise, or even the more recent Scream sequels. Two of your fellow students just savagely murdered, and this is the way that you show your compassion and sensitivity, huh? Let me show you something. You're both expelled. Get out. The opening scene has become one of the most iconic in horror history, and it's also arguably the toughest scene to watch. If you can get through it, you can definitely handle the rest of the movie. You like scary movies? Uh huh. What's your favorite scary movie? Uh, I don't know. You have to have a favorite. What comes to mind? 
Um, Halloween. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Evil Dead franchise. Shut it off. Kanda. Shut it off. Kanda. Shut it off! Oh my God. This horror comedy series becomes less horror and more comedy the further it progresses. It starts in modern times with a group of college students trapped in a cabin where they're possessed and attacked by demons. By the third film, protagonist Ash is fighting deadites in medieval times. The amount of blood and gore on display is impressively over the top, to the point that it's absurd rather than frightening. Oh no! 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 There are still plenty of scares, but the physical comedy, cheesy one-liners, and crazy action sequences make this franchise a wild adventure that anyone can enjoy. You know your shoelace is untied. What's your favorite not so scary movie? Let us know in the comments. Well, Murray, you're a zombie. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.